What do we have here? This is a Delta Power Light Lantern. This is actually a remake or maybe an uh, I would call it an update of the Lantern. Uh, it's probably dates back to the 1980s. So to me, a remake is something um, made from an old something that's older. Originally, these were made uh, in 1933 is when the patent was first presented, and it was approved in 1936. It, had, it was a little bit different. We'll go through the differences in a little bit. But this in the 80s, they decided to remake it. It's powered off the old 6-volt battery, which was a huge, big old battery with two little terminals up top. And they're very heavy, but they produced a lot of power. So this was the standard used in railroad lines. Uh, what's good about it, it has a switch that you can have a, a top illum illuminating lamp. So if you wanted to sit it on the table and then you would have light. Uh, in the room you can have that or the big powerful incandescent bulb in the front to give forward light now back in the day they use the light bulbs I think they're called T10s they're kind of little light bulbs which is what you got up here you also had one in the front too and that's the difference you can tell this is an update because this is a PAR 36 it's a big old light bulb still being used today in some applications but uh, these are both incandescents which are very inefficient and gets very hot. So we're going to change that to make it more up to date. Before we clean it, I want to test it to see if the bulbs work. Um, I don't have a 6 volt battery to test it. It actually goes right here. You push the little button. It's kind of stuck. And the big 6 volt battery goes on the inside here. The two leads of the battery, the inside circle is the positive contact and then the outside ring here is the negative so we, since we don't have really anything to clip our alligators clip, clips to what we're going to do is uh, take some magnets so these are neodymium magnets I use them for a lot of different projects you can use one or a stack but what we're going to do is we're going to stick it in there so you see we got our magnet on the positive and then our magnet tower on the negative there. So we're going to do the alligator side of it. Just make sure they don't touch. We're doing 9 volts so it's not going to be matter. But just make sure they don't touch each other. Alright, so I'm just going to hold the leads here. And we're going to switch the light on and we'll see if anything works right now as is. So we turn the light to the front amber light right up here. If we turn the switch to the front, I think the incandescent uh, filament is broken so we don't get any lights here. But that's what it looks like. At least we can compare when we uh, do our upgrades. So let's get this taken apart. Let's get it cleaned up. We're not going to do a full uh, paint restoration. We're just going to get it clean because I like the patina of how it looks. Uh, but let's get it cleaned up so it's a little bit more usable. And maybe we'll polish a little bit of this. I hope this is real brass and not just plated. So we'll take a look at that and check it out. Alright, so we got everything cleaned over here, but over here is what we're going to need to put it back together. So for the power source, we are going to use three 18650 batteries. Uh, this is our XTAR charger. 
that we talked about in our previous video. Here's two of them. And this also works as a ba battery power bank too, which is kind of cool. So um, we don't, and this is the third one, I just had extra. This is not just a regular battery pack. This holds 18650s, but we are going to modify it. Um, we're going to try to make this as safe as possible because this is a, kind of going to be a stepping stone to further projects with 18650s. We're going to, one, add a fuse. So usually when you use 18650 batteries, they have a battery management system to charge it. But we're using the XTAR to charge them so they'll be balanced. But uh, in the future, we want to build battery packs, even though with a not as sophisticated as a battery management system, but we want it to still be safe. So we're going to include a fuse. This is going to be a 5 amp fuse. This is a little overkill. This is an automotive one, and it's a full size uh, fuse. I wanted to get as many, but I didn't. I didn't have one. So we're going to use this for the fuse, connect it to the battery pack, and then I've also got this sensor. This is a pretty unique item that's been used for a long time in the uh, RC car world. What it's going to do is basically watch the battery charging of each battery. And then also it's got a warning sound. It's got a siren in here that if the batteries go below a certain voltage level, then it will sound an alarm and that will tell you to stop using it and take the batteries out. Normally BMS would um, cut the battery off completely, but this is kind of the poor man's way to do it. If you hear the buzzing, that means it's time to stop using those batteries and to charge it up yourself. So we're going to get there. Um, I, later we'll look into battery management systems so that we can get off the shelf and add to our system. But for this project, I think it's very simple. Uh, we'll do it this way. So to get started is we need to add our fuse to our uh, battery connector that goes on the inside of our lantern. So to do our soldering, I'm going to use my favorite soldering iron. This is a Pinesel. This is a uh, takeoff of the T100. If you're interested in it, what is beneficial about this is this can be hooked up to AC power, but also DC power. In a, in a previous video also, we made an adapter so that we can connect uh, our tool batteries, like our Makita batteries. This is what this is set up for directly to the pine soul so we can do this mobile if we're uh, out on the job site but I love this. All this is is a soldering iron connected to a silicone USB cord connect, connected to a 65 watt U, uh, power cord, USB-C power cord uh, power block. This heats up so fast you push the button here let me show you. You push the button and it just it heats up so fast. We'll get up to about 400 degrees and oh, it's upside down. I set it up to left handed, that's why. We're 300 and we're at 400. So, I mean, it took like five seconds. Whereas my old Weller, you'd have to wait forever for it to heat up, but it, we're ready to go. Instant, almost instantaneous heat. All right, so remember the center is the positive. We're gonna add a little solder to our end first. This is pretty thick wire. I think this is a 14, 12 gauge, I don't know, it's pretty thick. What does it say on here? It's gonna take it a second to heat up. All right, there you go. I'm gonna add a little bit more here. Wire is hot, all right, there you go. Just took a little bit more solder than I had. We're on there good now. All right, so we need to do one for the negative line, too. So that takes me to my next thing, is here's a dead power supply. I like to save these because it's got some great wires on here that you can use um, to power things up. So let's get one of our power lines. Here, we're going to use this. This is our main power line. Let's get a black one here. We're going to change out this black wire and make it thicker. So we're going to take the black wire from our power supply and we're going to snip it. And that's how I like to get recycled wire. And also, you get a bunch of different colors too, so it's good for different projects. So I don't have to buy as much wire. Most of my projects are small. 
and they just take short runs. So now what we're going to do is we are, we've got to rewire this battery pack. I'm going to take this out here. These are just riveted in. Good thing about the pine sole is if you let it sit, it will turn off after so long. See, it's at 63 degrees. It's just so it's kind of forget about it factor. You don't have to worry about it burning the house down. We've got our negative cable hooked up. I let's go ahead and change the the power, the positive lead too, to make it a little thicker. But I was thinking about, let's go back to the negative. Uh, on this sensor, we're going to have to have four wires. And uh, it says the, the pin on the very left, th this is JST connectors. And the one on the very left is the negative. So we need to be negative on that side. That's negative. And then the three other wires will be the positive leads that go to each battery. We get that also off, off of our power supply. It looks like that. And let's see which way it fits in here. Uh, let's see, there's a big and a little side. So it fits like that. So we're going to have to ignore the color of the wires because the yellow is going to be our negative. So we are going to need to connect. Let's go ahead and cut these out. So the yellow wire is going to be negative. So what we will do is we will connect our negative, a negative wire to the negative part of the lantern. We're going to put connectors on here so that we can easily remove the battery if necessary. And then we are going to, we need to connect the negative from here with the negative of our battery management system. And then these positive lines will go to each of the positive of the battery. So let's get to work on that and we'll, I'll, we'll go through it as we go. And there you go, so that's attached there. And then what we're going to do is let's line up, how, see how long our lines are. And they're both about like that. So let's go ahead and trim it. And we'll get the connectors. So when I connect uh, different connections like batteries and such, I like to use spade connectors. And these are spade connectors with heat shrink. Now, let's go ahead. I'm going to grab, uh, they've got a male and female end. This is two females. And then you got two males. And it just sticks in just like that. And then on the ends, you can heat shrink it onto the wire. Now this, unfortunately, is a 12 gauge wire that came with our fuse. So, but we're going to cram it up. For our sake, it doesn't matter. We're not going to have that much power going through it. So we're going to just cram one of these. Uh, these are for 14 to 16 gauge wire. But another thing, I, let's go ahead and get that on. And then we'll talk about a trick I like to do. So we just spin that on. So we've got the split on top. So we just got to make sure the nub of the crimp is on the bottom there. Just squeeze it. Give it a little pull test. It's tight. And then a little bit of heat. And that should shrink right up. Okay, so for the negative, since it is a smaller gauge, Trip, trim that. We're going to use the pink connector, which is uh, 22 to 16 gauge wire, and this is 18 gauge wire. So we'll just stick that right in, find out where the seam is at, and it is on top. Make sure our, so we use the pink, and it doesn't have a divot in it right there. So we're just going to pinch it. Give it a little tug. It's a little loose. Let's see if we use this one right here. I don't think that crimper does very well with the smaller one. Yeah, it's pulling out. What we can do is add a little solder if we wanted to. We'll go ahead and uh, let's heat it up. And then we'll add a little solder to the other end. We're going to add a little solder to the end right here. Hopefully it'll get underneath that plastic. And then I'll hold it a little better. Now, so we've got our negative and positive. 
So now we got our battery. So now we need to change. Let's change our positive line out with a bigger line. And we'll get that right here. Here's a piece. I'm telling you, saving these power supplies is great. Get some good wire out of it for projects just like this. All right, so for this, pull it out just like that. See, we stuck it through the hole here. That way, we have a better connection to solder it. Just make sure your insulator is below because you need the battery to touch right there. So, let's add a little solder. Make me feel better. Oop. We're melting the plastic. We just melted the connector. The plastic melted. Let's let that cool down a little bit. Alright, so that's good. Alright, let's get this end here. So we've got these two ends. And another thing too, I should have done a good practice is to make them different lengths. I wasn't thinking. Just so that, especially on the battery, because you don't want these two different wires and if they're if they accidentally touch, you don't want the wires to uh, over short circuit. So we kind of leave it at different lengths. Now this doesn't matter because there's, this isn't the power side, but um, it's also good to have them to match. But we are going to make them a different length here, like that. And then we're going to use this wire. Oh, we're going to use actually this wire. Remember our negative here is yellow. I just added the pink connector, crimped it on to our two negative leads that we had uh, twisted together. And now I'm just going to heat it up. The heat shrink part of it. Alright. So now we have the negative from the lantern and the negative of the battery and they connect. So we need to do that same thing for the positive. Each line is going to be for each battery. So the first battery we can con combine these two and I'll make the wire a little thicker so it'll fit in the blue connector a little better. So here is our female connector. Double check it. Here's our male connector on this side. You know what? We didn't switch it. I know I said to. We put both males on this end. Well, I'm going to leave it, but I wasn't thinking. Uh, but this should have been switched. I don't, I'm not going to fix it now. Actually, let's fix it. And that way, we got plenty of line. Let's go ahead and fix it just because while we're here. Let's just do it right. Doesn't really matter, but just being particular about it, we'll just do it right. So again, this is 12 gauge. We're going to slip it on the female side of the, the blue. Alright, now we're back to it. Let's start. So what do we got? We got the pink female on the negative. So now we need a blue male. On the positive. And our sensor. See if this is thick enough. All right, we got our connector on. Let's crimp it. We got the seam on up, facing up. All right, perfect. Now we just need to connect our other two wires to our other battery connectors here so that was as positive there here's battery 2 and battery 3's positive connectors so we're going to do battery 2 here like that we're just going to connect it on the outside just heat it up get a little solder hopefully it don't melt the plastic we are all right so we got that connected and now we gotta get our third battery here we 
we'll do a little test before we we'll take a we'll pause our endeavors. Here's our third battery here. And we'll do a quick test. And we can see how the uh the uh, warning system works. Let's get that. It melts the plastic. That's probably why they rivet it on. Because the plastic melts so easily when you're soldering it. But we got it. Okay, I want to give it a test. Let's put the batteries in just to see how it works. Uh, this battery is backwards, so let's see here. Positive goes here. And you hear the beeping. All right, here you go. So the first battery is this battery two, and battery three are low. It's showing zero. So something's not right. Battery one. All right, let me check this out here. Okay, I was playing with it. And I figured out, since there's no instructions, I guessed wrong. What, uh, what you need to know is the one on the left is your negative. That's what we figured out. But the positive that goes with the battery. So this is the end of the line for the batteries in series. And that's going to the negative right here. So right here is going to this one. Then the wire right, the positive right next to it needs to be the battery that goes with it there. The second one is the middle one. And then the farthest one on this side is the one that goes all the way to the opposite side of the battery pack. So you got the positive here. It goes this way to the negative here. I had them switched and all I did was I just had to disconnect the, uh, you push something sharp down in here, push it down and the clips come out. So all I had to do is just flip the uh, connectors fourth wire and the second wire to different positions. So that fixed that. And then also I think I had to just push it in real hard too. So you see it says three cells in series. All of them are 11. Number one is batteries low. Number two is at four volts and three is at four volts which is exactly what we're getting. See all now it's at 10.9 and battery one is at 2.8 so I think I don't remember it's 3.2 I think is when the battery gets low and you can change it too um, and we'll go through that later when the warning bell is going to alarm but because that brown battery is at 2.8 that's why it's setting it off the other two batteries were at four uh, so that's it's working perfectly so now we know how to set it up I hope that uh, helps you so let's keep going Hey, it's me from the future. Uh, I know when I was editing the video that the beeping was kind of distracting. It was hard to hear about what's going on. So I just wanted to do a quick uh, jump in here and show you what the battery pack is working when everything's charged up just to kind of go over how what the display actually looks like. And I know the display was kind of hard to see. So let's jump real quick. Look, take a look at that and then we'll jump back into the project right after it. All the batteries are charged in the exact same position as they were yesterday. So I slowed the camera shutter speed real slow, so I'm not going to be able to do any movement in the frame or it'll just look all blurry. But I did that so you can actually see what's on the screen. There's all the batteries are 12.4 volts. The first battery is checking at 4.14. The second battery is 411. And the third battery is at 420. So um, that it just cycles through that over and over again and it is monitoring all the batteries. If you ever had something you wanted to check out and you can mount this on a bike or some e-bike or something like that uh, but it's kind of handy so the beeping's not happening because all the batteries are above the uh, voltage limit uh, but that is the whole purpose of this is just to monitor the batteries visually uh, without having an actual BMS so let's get back into the video and continue the build so everything's clean and dry you can kind of see the color a little bit better it's more of a green and then the base is a dark green so I like the colors of that time period. I think there was a label here. I don't know if that was tape or if it's a label or not. Because there's not really much on labeling except for a, uh, on the bottom it's stamped Delta Electric Company. It made in the USA. So I think there was a triangular sticker that goes right here. But it's long gone. So let's get this put back together. The line we didn't mark is the negative. I'm not sure if that's going to matter in a minute. 
I'll explain why, but the one that we did mark is connected to the positive side, so we'll keep that in mind. We gotta get the switch in here, back through, like that, I guess it doesn't really matter. And then we gotta stick it in here so we can screw it back together. So we're gonna have to kind of put pressure while we're screwing it. And this one had our ground tab on there. That's one. Let's make sure our wires are not pinching. Uh oh, we just lost our power cord. I have to do a little surgery there. I'm going to reconnect this and I'll, I'll bring it back. So I don't mention if we talked about this before, but in addition to cleaning it up, I am upgrading this from a 6 volt system to a 12 volt system, which all that means is more power in the battery. And then I've also added all LEDs. So this is an LED PAR 36. I don't know if I said 38 before, but this it's a 30... Uh, so 36, that's the type of uh, light bulb it is. And it's the exact same as the old one. It's just, here's the old one. This is incandescent, and this is LED. Now I wish it wasn't, it had the clear glass and all that, but because of LEDs, I understand why they did that. And then going back to, I don't know if there's a negative or positive on this thing, it doesn't mention it, but LEDs are usually sensitive to which direction it goes, but there's no marking, so we'll just have to play with it. But this is a 5000K, and it's only 15 watts. I don't know what incandescent this is, but this is uh, rated for 12 uh, volts, 10 to 30 volts. So, and I think this is like, I forget how many lumens it was. It's like something ridiculous where I don't, for the incandescent is not very much. So we're going to add that, but we're also going to add, these are the H10s, E10s, E10s, I'm sorry. Again, this is LED, we're going to upgrade this to the LED. Now if you had the older version, both this light and the light in front were, was an E10. But uh, then they upgraded it in the 80s to be this PAR 30 to get a little bit brighter light. And put our cap on. And where's our ring here? And we just gotta twist our ring there. That's on. So we're just gonna add our light bulb to the front here. I'm gonna put the lettering up because it's on top. With the lettering up, we made our black mark on this side, so we're gonna keep it that way and see how that works. This is not a brass ring, this is just a metal coated in gold, however, whatever process that is, so we were not able to uh, polish it up, which is a little unfortunate. Hopefully the back is not grounding out the light bulb. Now we know our battery is low, we're not going to connect our sensor up, because this is going to beep and annoy us, but we got 11 volts and that should be good. Oh, we forgot our handle here. All right, got our handle. Let's put our base on. Well, we'll leave our base off for now. Let's just hook up the power. So it's positive. Goes to red. To make sure our light's off. That negative goes to pink, black there. All right, so there's a battery hooked up. Let's give it a test. There we go. That is bright. Turn off. Then we get our little lantern on top with the yellow amber light. That's awesome. I've got a little bit of the light coming from the workshop, but we are outside and you can see it's dark. Let's go ahead and turn this on. And there you go. That is our uh, table lamp, I would say. This just kind of illuminates the room. 
Now let's check the spotlight and see how that works. Now on camera it doesn't show up as well, but you can see probably about a good 15 feet. And you can see the birdhouse. Once you get in the dark it doesn't pick up as well, that's just based on camera. But I can see a good another 50 feet out there, very bright. I think this is 2000 lumens, uh, the bulb. So uh, it is plenty bright if you're ever needing to go outside and to look for anything. It would, it would light up a camp, camp spot really well. It's very bright. I tried to use the light to finish off this video, but I think this is one of my favorite restorations we've done so far. This is the OG flashlight uh, that goes started it all. And I can't believe this was how big it is. And compared to what we I use now is this little mini pocket flashlight, which is 100 lumens. I know this is a lot bigger power, but this is what started it all. Uh, I'm glad we were able to restore it. I'm glad we were able to upgrade it to the 12 volts system so we get the new technology, new batteries, and everything. So it, it can go for another 100 years. I hope you find something to restore that brings you as much joy as this did to me. Till next time. And if you'd like to see more videos like the one that you just saw, you can check here and here. And remember the ABCs of making. Always be creating. Till next time.